Alrighty, Mr. Gatekeeper here. Let's see here. Now right, we got another one of these. Uh, this this is the fourth or fifth one I've had come through my hands. I think I've learned these uh, pretty well. Anybody else out there just got some of these old amps laying around? It seems like uh, every one I've come across has been dead. And uh, I can see uh, why. There's a couple of things in there that I think the factory should have done a little differently. But, but uh, you know, just more for me to fix, I guess. They're not that bad of fixes. And... Uh, I believe it's called a Matico or a Medico or something like that. Another thing I don't like about these amps, if the majority of them you find will not have the lettering on them. All I have to do is wet my finger and rub my finger across those letters. I could have all of those letters and that 200 right there off this amp in the matter of a minute or two. So they, they didn't, I think they used an ink or something. They should have used a, Maybe a vinyl or something like that would have lasted probably longer. But um, let's get on to the output test. Um, I had a few people ask me what kind of radio I use. And uh, I'll tell you again, I would use just a simple Cobra 29. Here it is uh, mounted up under the table down here. Just a simple Cobra 29. Modulation is turned up to 100%. The limiter is still in and has a dead key variable. Uh, that's it. Just a simple radio just for tuning. I also uh, talk on it as well on here. And like I said, this is a temporary setup here, everybody. This is a temporary setup. As you can see, I'm piled. I've, I've, I don't think I've ever got up and walked around and showed y'all everything in here because. It's slightly embarrassing. It is slightly embarrassing, but uh, I moved in here. We'll be doing that one next. It's one of my plastic builds. I moved in here, uh, it seems like not too long ago, but it was probably about, uh, probably about a year or so ago, maybe a little more. Did some uh, personal issues. And uh, out back, I'm working on a building, and I'll be moving everything in there and actually have a neat place to work. I can't wait. Look at my beautiful uh, sweet tube. Uh, I don't think I never showed them off either. My beautiful sweet tube. Brand spanking new off the hot plate. Sweet tube builds. There ain't many people that does sweep tubes builds anymore. There's very few out there that do. These were built by, well, the bottom one was, um, I bought the bottom one as it is, but it was a complete rebuild. The only thing new, the only thing that's still in that box is the, that, that was in it originally is the case, the little light up there to the top right, and the tubes. It's got six LF6s. And I got two, uh, that's the driver for it right there. And that's the power supply for the one in the bottom. You do about 12 to 1500 watts. It's just a nice little homebrew sweet tube amp. You got a little two tuber driver right there. And that's another plastic I'm about to do one of. But I'll probably never let that go right there. This was done by a fellow named Spark Plug. This was done by my buddy Triple Nine with spark plug uh, over his shoulders, walking him through the whole build. Very nice sounding amps, man. Good home brew. You can't beat it. All right, let's get back to the matter at hand. I got off subject a little. I'll show you what we're going to be putting into it. One watt dead key. About 20 watts. Gonna be upgrading to an LP 100 soon, y'all. Getting my bird meters back. Be getting some, uh, be using some bird meters and the LP 100 on the output. And, uh, of course, we'll keep that bird meter on the input there. All right, let me put 20 watts in it. We're on 13.7 volts. Let's 
flip the amp on. Middle is high. I mean, middle is low. Excuse me. Sorry about that. Middle is low. Uh, medium is all the way down and high is all the way up. Repainted the cover. Some good Rust-Oleum paint. Never going to worry about rust again. Had to do a lot of work on this cover as well. Probably got about six to eight hours on three covers. Believe it or not, it does take a little bit of labor when you ain't got the right kind of tools yet. Just using a Dremel. <laughs> I ain't scared to admit it, y'all. Hey, I'm still trying to come up in the game. I still consider, consider myself a beginner. But some people say I'm just being humble. I'll let y'all be the judge of that. All righty, we're on low. Do 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 while ago and it is amplifying i'm seeing the s meter increase a little but it's not you know magnificent or anything like that all right let's go to medium about 150 oh let you see the forward movement on the amperage Oh, oh, take a look at the reflect, 10 watt slug, this is the input y'all, oh, about 50 milliwatts, that's a 10 watt slug, the 100 all the way to the right, that would be the 10 watts, the 40 would be 4, so this is beautiful, hardly no reflect at all, maybe 25, 50 milliwatts at the most. Just the way we do them, y'all. These older amps, you got to put tremors in them. And, and from what I've noticed, a lot of the time, you almost have to put a tremor on the input, bare minimum, on these older amps and always trim that reflect down. It just always seems like every time I get one, the reflect's up around one watt or, you know, half a watt, something like that. So, all right, going to high. This amp, like a lot of the other ones, the high is, is mainly used for a lower, lower wattage amp. Uh, 20 watts does overdrive it a little bit, so uh, I wouldn't run this amp on higher unless you're running a super, super low dead key or uh, just running a lower wattage radio. You can put that this bad boy on medium, run it on about 15 volts and dump about 25 watts into it and let her rip, man. She has a class C. All right, this is on high. About a 60, 70 watt dead key. Alright, about 170, 169, 170. Right, let's go ahead and bump her to 15.4 volts. Let's see if we can get around that 200 mark it's claiming to be. Right there at it. About 205. So you don't it's not overdriven much with 20 watts. Let me show you the amperage. So you don't swing back a lot. Oh, but there is a little bit of saturation. Put you about a 15 watt. 15 watt amp should make it not overdrive on high. Or if I lower this if I lower this dead key probably down to Half a watt, it might help, but that swing is what's really doing it. You wouldn't kill the transistors running 20 watts in it like this. Oh, but you got a little bit of saturation there. But see, that's a big difference from that and then on medium. Oh, see that forward swing? Oh, see, that's what you want. That's an amperage meter, though. We're watching the actual current that the amplifier is pulling. 
Reflect goes up just a tad bit on full power, 15.3 volts. But still perfect operating range. That might be uh, shoot, 50 milliamp, uh, 50 milliwatts. Which is still a 1.1. Uh, 1 .1. 200 watts, 50 milliwatts of reflect. If you look at the ratio, it's a 1 to 1. So there we go. Um, go ahead and pop the top off real quick before we stop this video. We'll just go over the few things that I had to repair like I always do. Get something to point here. Alright, we had to throw a pair of uh, MRF-455s. They are not new. They are used 455s. I need to start writing this down. But I can once I look inside the amp, I can remember because I only have a few few brand new pairs of Motorola's laying around. I got a couple more 454s, I think one more pair of 455s, two more pair of SRFs, a couple other odd 492s. But um, we had to rework the input here and re replace these resistors. They were blown completely. Put new 10 ohms um, right there for the bias. We don't have no thermal runaway on us. <laughs> we took the trimmer off here like I always like to do and mic that in with a 1000. Okay, um, this amp didn't have to have much to do with it. We retuned the input. Let's see, uh, we left the output alone. It was fine. 50 picofarad on the output. We did have to do some work over here like we usually have to do. There's uh, this choke right down in here. I had to replace that choke, and if you see this hole down in here, the way they had that for the SO239, come on now, focus, that hole right there, the way they had that was uh, the SO239 right here, as you can see, was coming through and looping around with a very, very skinny, skinny lead capacitor. The leads on it were tiny. So I just bypassed that capacitor. It was causing some reflect issues. And as you can see, what we did, let's see if we can get it to focus. What we did is we just took it straight onto the board right there. Go ahead and fix that issue right there all along. Them caps there, you know, they're not exactly needed. They just kind of help get any, any DC signals that could be in the signal before the amp. But you do have one coming out. It's going through this 1,000 out, so you still got filter on that. A lot of us home brewers, you know, we don't even use them caps, man. So we fixed that issue right there, and uh, we cleaned it up. It was really, really dirty. We always clean these amps, man. When I say we, I'm talking about me and I. <laughs> I got a buddy of mine that does some help with me too, man. I got an apprentice that I'm starting to teach. Um, all righty, that's like about all we had to do. There wasn't too much wrong with this amp. And uh, she's she, she's doing her 200. It's advertised on the front here. Sometimes you'll see it say 200. Sometimes you'll see it say 150. I've seen one that says 125, and I've even seen one that says 100. Because if you look at the board, it says 100. See that? They're all the boards are the same. They just put different numbers on them for the fun of it. <laughs> but they all do the same thing. I've had them do all the way up to about 250 at the bare most. At the most, in like 150 at the bare minimum. So, it's right there where she should be. It says B works, preempt works, but not, you know, amazingly, but it works. And, uh, it'll we'll make a good home for somebody. Got a, like I said, brand new painted top, rust-oleum paint. Won't have no rusting issues on that for probably another 20, 30 years. So, hope y'all enjoy. We'll be doing uh, the plastic builds next. Sure, y'all enjoy them. I call them little dirt builds, meaning uh, little builds I threw together to make a little extra cash for the old pocket. But they're still really neat builds. Uh, one of them's an AB. Yep, one of them's an AB bias, and uh, one's a C using some uh, HG 1446s. So we'll get to that next. Whoever gets this, hope you enjoy it. Mr. Gatekeeper puts another one in the wind. Don't forget, we got transformers. Anybody need transformers for power supplies? Holler at me on my email, T-H-R-E-E-3-M-A-N 
That's Monday Alpha November. Pro. P is in purple. R-O. 3manpro at gmail.com. Shout me an email. We gone.